Hello and welcome to an Adobe Aero video. In this video we'll be making a drinks can and we'll be placing it using Adobe Dimensions into the real world. So first thing I've done is I've created this fake brand uh, in Illustrator. Oh. Uh, in Illustrator. So again you can see I've just created some very simple, something inspired largely by Coca-Cola called Gloop, drink it up. Um, it's a work in progress, but as you can see, some details are missing, but it'll do. So first thing I've done is I've just created this asset, saved it as a JPEG, and now I can go and launch Adobe Dimensions. So Adobe Dimensions and Photoshop are the two programs at the moment that can currently connect to Adobe Aero. And we'd use Photoshop for more, uh, if you wanted to keep a sort of um, 2D, theater style layered uh, AR target image, for example, uh, but Adobe Dimensions we can use for importing our 3D assets quite easily. So I'm just going to create a new project and I'm going to choose uh, my 3D object. In this case, I'm going to choose this beverage can with condensation on. And I want the condensation just because it gives a bit more detail, gives it a bit more of a weird look, and it'll just make it look a bit cooler when we place it into our real world scene. So with my drink can selected, you notice I've got these three assets here, which is the pull ring. If I right click and drag, you can see the pull ring is this bit at the top. We have the liquid, which we can always toggle on or off, the little eye icon here. And we have the can itself. At any point, any of these objects, we can obviously, like I said, turn it invisible or uninvisible, and then we can lock and unlock. If we want to work on a layer without changing any of the other assets, we make sure we lock the layers that we're not working on and keep the one we are working on unlocked. And we can also adjust the pivot point. We're not going to need to worry about that because we're keeping the pivot point on the base of this because we're just going to be placing this into the real world on a flat surface. But if your 3D model had a pivot point that wasn't in the, uh, let's say in the middle of the object, and you wanted to move it, you can do so by adjusting the pivot point within the properties panel. Likewise, we can also adjust the scale, but again, because we're going to be bringing this into Adobe Aero, we can always adjust the scale within the AR scene afterwards anyway. So by double clicking on my can, I have these two materials here. One is the ring pull material, which is a silver metal top here. The other one is the can. Now I could just import the image as my base color onto the can, uh, however, I'm not going to do that because, uh, from my experience, because of the way this model is generated, it won't work quite well. It's actually the UV offset will be a bit off and it won't give me enough control that I actually want. So instead, I'm going to have the can material selected and then choose the actions, place a graphic on the model. This is where I navigate to my JPEG that I've created, the Gloop label. This will now place it onto my scene. Uh, to scale it I click on the edge of the wheel and I click and drag to scale up and scale down accordingly. To move I just click left click somewhere within that wheel space and move and I know for a fact that the proportions of this label aren't 100% uh, accurate so I can't go all the way to the top so I have to keep it somewhat in the middle and we have to have this edge rim uh, that's just because I didn't quite make the label as high as it should be. But again, I can always go and tweak that afterwards by just replacing the image here. So you can see I could always have the option here for repeat, uh, for it to be a fill, sorry, which would basically place it onto the entire can. And then I could always adjust the values here to... Uh, make it fit better, likewise with the offset. Uh, but I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to keep this on decal. And again, just scale this back up. And I'm going to rotate round using the white mouse button. Uh, you see this little gap here? Uh, actually, if you look at any uh, drinks can, you will notice you've got this seam. That is the welded, that's the sort of uh, joining seam that you find on drinks cans. Uh, although I could actually also get rid of that by just sort of adjusting the scale here a little bit. And if I scale up, 
should intercept it. Didn't seem to be, but uh, there is a way of removing that. Uh, again, it's to do with how the model's generated with the UV and this, uh, etc. So I'm not going to worry about that too much for now. So here we have my drinks can group. Um, I'm going to select the can material and I'm going to increase its metallic value because I want this can to be quite reflective. Um, but I'm also going to bring up its roughness a little bit just to make it not too much like a uh, mirror effect. I want to keep it to have some scratches, some sort of indentation, some sort of texture on it so it doesn't just reflect the environment too much because a real drinks can has some shine to it but doesn't perfectly reflect the, the face for example. Keeping the normal as is. And I'm just going to just check all my values here before I carry on. And I'm fairly happy with that. Uh, I am going to just change the base colour. I'm just going to change a base colour that's a little bit more closer to what I would expect the can to have. So it's sort of greeny blue here. And once I am happy with my object and I've got the texture on it, and bear in mind this object could be any of the objects here, or it could be one that I bring in myself um, as a FBX or OBJ model. I could then obviously apply my own decal on materials to it depending on how that uh, model was generated. I can simply go up to file, export, export to aero. I want to choose an appropriate location for it. I'm going to save it in my project aero folder. I'm going to call this glue can. I'm just going to click save. And this will now save it onto the Adobe Cloud. And if we now go over onto our phone or tablet, we will be able to continue the next step, which will be actually placing our can into the real world using the Adobe Aero application, which is currently only available for iOS devices. So grab this, let's get over here, get some cans, Wait. and launch. And now we've uh, launched the Adobe Aero application onto our iPad. And I'm simply going to hit new. We're going to scan our surface. So as you can see, I've already placed some cans there for a sense of real life scale. I'm going to tap where I want to start the placement of that uh, texture. So as you see, it's good for flat surfaces. So now I've tapped, I'm going to go to Add Creative Cloud, Project Aero. I'm going to navigate to my Gloop Can, click Open, and this will download it from the Creative Cloud where I've exported it from Adobe Dimensions. I can now simply place it where I want to using two fingers to scale it down and two fingers and twisting to rotate it. And to place it, I'll just simply move my camera to where I want it to be looking and where I want it to be positioned. I then place where I want to by clicking tap in, on the object once to place it into my scene. And now I should have my can there. Uh, a few things I can notice straight away is that the coloration isn't quite right. It's a little bit too bright. So I would have to go into Adobe Dimensions and adjust my coloration uh, in a scene. Uh, make it a little bit darker, make it a little bit more reflective of what it would be in this uh, lighting environment, for example. Um, especially around the sort of top area, it just doesn't look quite 100% natural, it looks artificial. So again, this is a case where you have to work by placing it in the scene and then adjusting your workflow as you go along. I can also add a behaviour to it, so I, by tapping on the object I could add uh, an action, so I'm going to add a proximity trigger and every time I enter this radius I want it to spin, let's say, and just uh, test what that animation looks like. There we go, I can adjust the proximity. Just reduce the distance a little bit, there we go. So now if I go to preview Every time I enter that area, the can should spin and give a bit of motion to it. I could combine elements together to generate my effect. Um, but obviously, again, that depends on what your end goal is. So a few things, another few things to notice is that this can doesn't have any occlusion. So if I was to bring uh, another object in front of it, so let's say I drag this real life can in front of the AR can, 
it doesn't actually occlude it. So it's basically like a sticker almost on front of your camera lens. So it doesn't look quite right. Uh, it's not quite there yet. Adobe Aero ideally should include occlusion because it is possible nowadays for AR to do that by, some, uh, by using surface uh, detection, um, detecting the edges of objects to d distinguish whether that should be an occluder or not. But as you can see for product visualization, Adobe Aero is a nice little tool to play about with and quite easy to implement. So I've been Stephen Fisher. This has been another look at Adobe Aero, uh, going from Illustrator to Dimensions to the Aero application. Thank you for watching.